Can I, should I sing it? Okay. Stick in the camera. Lady Parts! So welcome to, to Lady Parts. This is my weekly blog. Um, all about female roles in film and TV, so get excited because the, there's so much for us to talk about. But this week we are talking about Fried Green Tomatoes, which is a 1991 film based on a book of the same name, Fried Green Tomatoes, at the Whistle Stop Cafe by Fanny Flagg. Uh, it was directed by John Avnet, and we've got four main characters here, um, kind of two parallel stories. One takes place in the 1920s through the 1940s, our two main characters there are Iggy and Ruth, played by Mary Stuart Masterson and Mary Louise Parker. And then our present day, which is uh, Ninny Threadgood, who's about 83 years old, played by Jessica Tandy. And Kathy Bates, who is uh, a premenopausal woman, um, overweight, dealing with self-esteem issues, and they become kind of unlikely friends when Evelyn uh, Kathy Bates' character Evelyn meets Ninny in a nursing home. Um, Ninny begins to tell her a story about her friends, Iggy and Ruth, and a town called the Whistle Stop. Uh, well, a town called Whistle Stop. They ran a cafe called the Whistle Stop Cafe. Um, small town kind of thing in Alabama. Um, so Iggy plays kind of a tomboy who we see from a young age as this kind of ragged and hot headed girl who is just always going to be herself and she also becomes unlikely friends with Ruth, who's just this really wholesome, church-going girl. Um, and so it's, it's kind of unlikely that they would have such a lifelong friendship. Um, and their story is what Ninny tells to Evelyn Couch. And through their stories, she kind of learns to be empowered and um, kind of take control of her life and do what, what is best for her. So. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the stereotypes, fried green tomatoes breaks down, some of the feminist issues they deal with in a covert manner, I would say, and uh, in a way that, that makes it more palatable for a mainstream audience. What I really love about this film is that it breaks down stereotypes about how women should behave. Most women have been expected to act like Ruth just proper, honest, very straightforward, and obedient to their husbands. Especially because this movie takes place in the South. So it's, it's even more exaggerated to kind of adhere to these norms. Um, Iggy is such an interesting character because she is larger than life. She's almost mythical according to, to the director. Um, because she has this indestructible character. She's used in this, mo in this movie to kind of show these moments when someone's being treated unfairly or unequally and have someone acknowledge it and try to change it. Um, in this case, Iggy happens to empower Ruth to be a stronger woman and, and go after what she wants. But Ruth also kind of grounds Iggy to make her a softer, more social being, I would say, too. Ruth is considered a good girl because she fulfills her gender expectations. She does what she's told. Um, when she decides to live with Iggy, I mean, and that's kind of unheard of, this is, this is the 1920s, 1930s, and this is two women living together, and Ruth has a child. So it's, it's an unusual setup, but Ruth decides to embrace that life with Iggy because it's what makes her happy. Part of the reason is because Iggy gives her the bravery to do that. Um, she gives her the bravery to leave her abusive husband and pursue what makes her happy. Um, the twist in the plot, and as a story device that I really like, uh, is when Ruth's husband is murdered and Iggy is put on trial for it. We kind of see the town rally around her, this unlikely character, and they treat her like a f member of the family. Everyone doesn't ask questions about why she's different. They just accept that about her and even embrace it. Because of that spirit, Evelyn in the present day story just starts to realize that she's been trying to please her husband 
for the majority of her adult life going above and beyond, going to these feminin uh, femininity classes uh, to learn about how to be a better wife and how to be a better mother and what to do to please your husband. Uh, so her self-esteem has really hit rock bottom when she meets Ninny. When she starts to, to learn about Iggy and Ruth, her self-esteem is just renewed and she's just compelled to embrace her inner strong woman. Um, in this case, her inner strong woman even gets a name. Tawanda, the Amazon woman. Finally. As I go. Thanks. Been out here all day. If I can show somebody that they're traveling, traveling wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, excuse me, uh, I was waiting for that space. Yeah? Tough. Face it, lady, we're younger and faster. Wanda. We get to Wanda, and, and we get to Wanda when Evelyn has had it with what society has asked of her, and she's decided to fight back. She begins to know her own needs and her desires and express and act on them. Um, so I really love that the film draws attention to that, and in a way that is still fun. It's still a fun movie to watch, and it, but it's still talking about important things. But I, I did want to share that the relationship in the novel compared to the movie is quite different. Uh, in the novel, it's, it's much more of a romantic relationship between Edgy and Ruth. Um, I mean, it's not stated completely overtly, but Ruth's character does say that she is essentially in love with Edgy, but she knows they can never be together. So it makes more sense for her to marry Frank Bennett and live that life that she was expected to. Um, she feels obligated almost. So their relationship in the film, uh, they do have a chemistry for sure, both physical and, and emotional. It's one of the deepest friendships that I've seen on film. Um, but it's never explicitly addressed. I think the closest we get is the food fight scene, but it's never explicitly addressed. I think the closest we get is the food fight scene uh, which I'll talk about a little bit later. It kind of, um, I think, the vehicle of the past, um, you know, that lesbianism was even more unacceptable at that time, and the fact that it was in the South, also add to that and, you know, you might not think about it as much if you're not a member of the LGBT community, or if you're not looking for it, you might miss it entirely. Um, but the point is I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Uh, something to think about if, if it's your first time watching the movie or if you hadn't thought about it before. Certainly, it's the director's choice to keep this movie in a certain genre, a certain audience, and in this case I think it did work and I, I you know, as a member of the LGBT community, I have, of course pined for public acceptance and, and positive representations. So I, I have to point it out. I must. Um, I just want LGBT lives to be shown, portrayed accurately and compassionately and, and 
be more widely distributed and acknowledged. Um, but the main point of the film is that director John Avnet and Fanny Flagg are bringing attention to the, these unfair expectations that are put on women and what happens when they decide to embrace what they need in their lives rather than trying to please everyone else. We obviously see that with Iggy and Ruth deciding to have a lifelong friendship and, and that to be their family. Um, with Evelyn, she realizes that she's going to do what she needs to do for her um, and stop being afraid of letting men down or society down and not being the southern belle. She's going to do what she needs. Some facts. Fried Green Tomatoes grossed $119 million at the box office worldwide on an $11 million budget. That's pretty incredible. Um, especially when, you know, there's a movie poster with four women on it. I mean, there's probably not a whole lot of guys who are going to look at that movie and, and be like, oh, dude, I totally want to see that. I mean, additionally, there's a lot of provocative issues besides the feminist things that I've talked about. Um, Iggy doesn't follow gender norms, of course. She plays poker, she drinks, she defies the Ku Klux Klan, she recaptures her lesbian love, those things we've talked about. But also there's murder and cannibalization. Those are things that happen and it's somehow magically portrayed in such a way that you don't feel weird about it. It was nominated for two Academy Awards and I think it's some, a movie that really is timeless. The main thing about the movie is talking about friendship and memories and the importance of storytelling so that we continue to make people live through their stories. Just like film in and of, in and of itself is keeping a story alive, keeping those actors and actresses alive, as well as the characters, the writers, the directors, who all made that vision complete and moved other people. It's beautifully shot. They've picked great locations for the film um, in Joliet, Georgia. They've actually rebuilt a whole town, um, like a ghost town, for the movie, and it became a town when they left. It just completely restored itself. So that's that's a pretty amazing side note. Uh, but we see women in love, women in victory, women in defeat. We get a little bit of everything, because that's how life is. Evelyn Couch's story shows her working to gain recognition and self-worth against the odds. It feels real, it feels like something you can relate to. She says in the movie, someone held up a mirror to her face and. She didn't like what she saw, so she changed. And it's a, it's a very great character arc that we see in this movie. For not one, but four characters. So that, that's doing a lot. I think Ruth's sentiment, one of the things she says during the film, is never say never to me. And that's kind of like the feminist outcry, right? Like, don't tell me what I can do. I decide what I can do. Um, so it's definitely a story of empowerment and fighting for what you want. It's about struggles that, that women face, but it also just has a lot of soul, it has a lot of charm and heart, and it, it's touching. It makes you feel good when you're done. You feel like you've, you've heard a story that changes you, makes you think. Um, I think most of all, it reminds us to remember. Jessica Tandy's character, who, by the way, she, she's just amazing in this role, just so authentic and full of joy. Um, she says, all these people live as long as you remember them. So, uh, I certainly can't forget. I hope that if you haven't seen the movie that you see it. And um, please tell me your thoughts on the film and, and any other films you'd like to see. Please subscribe and like my videos. Uh, it helps me out a lot. It helps me keep going and um, knowing what, what you guys would like to hear about. So, thank you and take care.